tonight in this classroom, we are going to do everything in our power to give away one million dollars. <laughs> All right, kids, you ready to meet your new classmates? Yeah! She is a 25-year-old weight loss consultant who graduated from Covington Elementary in Crystal Lake, Illinois. Please welcome Marlies Pinto. Something looks different about you from that picture, Marlies. Is this right? It says that you lost over 72 pounds. You are a weight loss manager. That's almost a fifth grader, right? Oh, that is, that is. How much do you weigh, Bryce? Me, like 62. 62. She lost you. You just went away. <laughs> You lost it and you and you kept it off. What what an amazing story. Yeah. Now what what is the secret to losing over 70 pounds? You know, I wish there was a secret, Jeff. The secret is hard work, um, eating right, exercising. Yeah, and it's such a self-confidence thing. That is so awesome. Good for you. Let me tell you how it works in this classroom. Up on the board, you're gonna see 10 subjects. You get these 10 questions right, we're gonna give you one more question. You get it right, you leave here tonight not only 70 pounds lighter, one million dollars richer. How about that? And here's the good thing, Marlies, you don't have to take the test by yourself. These fifth graders are gonna take it with you. Let me introduce them. There's Jonathan in the back. Jenna. Choose one of them. Let's get Daddy, started. Daddy, Daddy. 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 I'm gonna have to go with Bryce because he's being Bryce, come up here. Oh, Bryce. Wait, you just gave your 62 pounds back. <laughs> Bryce, you got a smile on your face. I like the ladies. Yeah, ladies. I know you do, Bryce. <laughs> Let's find out, is Marlies Pinto smarter than a fifth grader? Yeah. All right, Marlies. 10 subjects, which one would you like first? Um, I'm gonna go with first grade measurements. First grade measurements, all right. Listen carefully, the first grade measurements question. Worth $1,000 is this. How many days equal two weeks? How many days equal two weeks? Bryce has locked in his answer. Well, there's seven days in one week. So two weeks would be seven times two. So I'm going to go with 14 and I'm locking it in. <laughs> Of course, it's 14, you got $1,000. <laughs> Nothing to it, right? Yeah, keep it up. All right, well, there's nine subjects remaining. Let's double that 1,000 right now. I'm gonna go with first grade animal science. First grade animal science, all right. All right, it's worth $2,000. The first great animal science question is this. True or false, the leopard is a member of the cat family. True or false, the leopard is a member of the cat family. Bryce has locked in his answer. Well, my birthday is in August and I am a Leo, which is a lion which is a feline, and so is the leopard. So I am going to go with true, and I'm locking it in. The question, the leopard is a member of the cat family. Marlies said true. You weren't lying. You're absolutely right. You got $2,000. Four 
classmates to choose from. Pick another one. I'm going to go with Jenna. Jenna, come on up here. There's eight subjects up there. Jen, if you had to help her, what would you tell her to go with? I'd still go with math and social studies. Math and social yeah. studies, the second grade question. I'm going to go with second grade social studies. Second grade social studies, all right. It's worth $5,000. The second grade social studies question is, what do the stars on the U.S. national flag represent? U.S. states, former presidents, constitutional amendments. What do the stars on the U.S. national flag represent? U.S. states, former presidents, or constitutional amendments? Jenna has locked in her answer. Well, I know it's not the former presidents. And I know that there used to be 13 stars on the U.S. states on the flag, but I know it's not constitutional. I'm going to go with A, U.S. states, and I'm locking it in. You know what? You said U.S. states. She said U.S. states. You're both right. She got $5,000. We'll be right back right after that. Welcome back to Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Our contestant, Marlies Pinto, a 25-year-old weight loss consultant who has lost over 70 pounds and kept it off for how long? Uh, four years now. Four years. Good for you. That is awesome. You're doing great in our game. You got $5,000. Seven subjects remain. Which subject would you like? Uh, I'm going to go with second grade math, Jeff. Second grade math. All right. All right, well, second grade math question. Where $10,000 is this? What is 71 minus 53 with the answer rounded to the nearest 10? What is 71 minus 53 with the answer rounded to the nearest 10? Jenna has locked in her answer. 71 minus 53 is 18. And if you round 18 to the nearest 10, it would be 20. So I'm going to lock in 20. You didn't even give me a chance to explain your cheats. Uh... <laughs> I was going to tell you, you could peek at your classmate's paper or copy her paper, but the only cheat you have available now is a save. Let's see if Jenna could save you. What is 71 minus 53 with the answer rounded to the nearest 10? You said 20. Your classmate Jenna said 20. She can't save you, but why would she? She's right. You got $10,000. 53 equals 18, rounded to the nearest 10 is 20. Nice job, Jenna. Bye, thank you. You've got three classmates remaining, trying to pick another one. Francesca, come on up here. Blonde power's working for me. The blonde power is working for you. <laughs> You've got 10,000. We're about to try to turn it into 25,000. <laughs> What's your favorite subject that's up there on the board? Probably science. She says third grade science, Marlies. OK. You know, one of my favorite subjects growing up was music, so I'm going to have to go with music, Jeff. Fourth grade music, OK. The $25,000 question is, 
In a C major scale, what musical note is two whole steps higher in pitch than the note F? In a C major scale, what musical note is two whole steps higher in pitch than the note F? Francesca has locked in her answer. Well, I know that the scale goes A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then it goes back to A. So two whole steps past F would be a G and then an A. So I'm going to lock in the note A. I'm going to make her happy. You just got $25,000. You're walking out of here with no less than $25,000 tonight. How about that? I'm emotional. Very impressive on that last question. Now, who do you have here today rooting for you? That is my gorgeous husband, Scott. Hey, right Scott, there. how are you? Welcome. How are you, Jeff? How are you doing? Thank you. Awesome. Amazing. Marlise, yep. what would you like to do now? Well, Francesca said she likes science, so I'm gonna go with third grade science. Third grade science. She's taking your advice. All right. The third grade science question worth $50,000 is this. In order for iron to rust, it needs to be exposed to both water and what gaseous element? In order for iron to rust, it needs to be exposed to both water and what gaseous element? Francesca has locked in her answer. Well, I think I know this one, but I would like to use a cheat because I want to see what the science whiz over here would like to say. So I'm going to use a peek. You want a peek? Yeah. You want to tell me what you're thinking? I think hydrogen. Like hydrogen peroxide. <laughs> Let's see what Francesca said. Francesca said, Oxygen. See, this is why I'm glad I peaked, because that would be the other thing I was thinking. I'm feeling pretty confident with her science skills. I think Francesca knows her stuff better than I do, so I'm gonna trust my fifth grader, and I'm going to lock in oxygen. <laughs> Marlise, so what you are saying is you trust a 10-year-old more than yourself on this one. I'll admit it, proudly. You said hydrogen. For 50 grand, I will proudly admit it. That you think the 10-year-old? Knows more about gaseous elements than I do. Trust me, she does. You got $50,000. Oxygen. Good job. Marlies. Marlies. You have $50,000. Four subjects remain before the million dollar question. Time to pick a classmate. Jonathan, come on up here. All right, there are four subjects on the board, Marlies. It is time to decide. I'm going to go with ancient cultures. Ancient cultures, third grade ancient cultures. <laughs> the third grade ancient cultures question is this. 
The pyramids of Giza in Egypt were originally built to be which of the following? Royal palaces, schools, or tombs? The pyramids of Giza in Egypt were originally built to be which of the following? Royal palaces, schools, or tombs? Jonathan has locked in his answer. You ever been to Egypt? I have not, Jeff. My instinct tells me that the pyramids of Giza in Egypt were originally built for what we still have them there for, which is tombs, and I'm going to lock that in. What grade are you in? Fifth. What did you say? I said A. You said A. Royal palaces. Marlies, have you ever given back $25,000 in a day before? No. Well, you didn't today either. The right answer is two. Play it for 175,000 right after this. Separate you from the million dollar question. We have one fourth grade, two fifth grade subjects. Which one would you like? You no, know, even though it's not my favorite, I'm gonna have to go with fourth grade world geography. Fourth grade world geography, all right. A fourth grade world geography question worth 175,000 is this. The Rhine River is located on what continent? The Rhine River is located on what continent? Jonathan has locked in his answer. Um, I think that I know this. And I'm feeling pretty confident that I know where the Rhine River, which continent it is. So I'm going with Europe, and I'm going to lock that answer in. I will tell you this. My three on the front row have it right. For 175,000, Francesca Bryce and Olivia said, Europe! <laughs> you are down to your last classmate. Save the best for last. I saved the best for last, baby. Bring it home. Hi, Olivia. Are you nervous? Not at all. Marlies. Yep. Health or U.S. history? You no. Know, I've always said history is my least favorite subject, so I'm going to have to go with health. Health. Fifth grade Fifth health. Grade health. I want you to listen carefully. The fifth grade health question worth $300,000 is, what organ in the human body produces and secretes bile? What organ in the human body produces and secretes bile? Olivia has locked in her answer. 
Well, let me see. For 300,000 I'm going for? 300, right now, you have 175,000. You get it right, you have $300,000. You get it wrong, you drop down to 25,000. Well, I know that when you're sick with a stomach flu and you throw up a lot, you eventually throw up bile. So the organ in the human body that produces and secretes bile is the stomach, and I'm locking that in. Scott, you're shaking your head. What do you think, Scott? I'm thinking the liver, but it is what it is. I think he's wrong. I think he's wrong. <laughs> you locked in very fast. I told you that if you missed this, you drop down to 25,000. But you slapped it in there and you said, it's the stomach I am locking it in. And guess what? It's not. not the stomach. You are right. It is the liver. <laughs> oh, it's going to be a long car ride home, isn't it? So here's where we stand. Oh, gosh, if she gets it right. I forgot. I forgot about the same. The only way oh, is if she said liver. Otherwise, you're walking out of here with 25,000. You want to see what Olivia said? You want to see it? Of course. Olivia's answer for $300,000 is coming up right after this. There's some tense moments in the classroom. Our contestant, Marlies Pinto, just answered this fifth grade question. What organ in the human body produces and secretes bile with the answer stomach? I told you you were wrong. If Olivia, your 10-year-old classmate, said liver, I told you you have $300,000. If she said anything else, you have $25,000. Marlies, let's see if Lady Luck is on your side. Take a look at the board. Olivia said, liver! That was close. Oh my gosh, my poor heart. You were so confident. I was so confident. See, it's so humbling, it's so humbling. Marlies, yep. do me a favor. Yep. Tell me how much we're playing for. Oh my goodness, half a million dollars. Half a million half dollars. Half a million dollars. It is worth $500,000. The US history question is this. Who was elected president of the Confederate States during the American Civil War? Who was elected president of the Confederate States during the American Civil War? Olivia has locked in her answer. I am so bad at US history. I don't, I, I don't know, but I know that she's really good at US history. Oh, goodness. Half a million dollars is so much money. Or I could walk away with 25,000 if 
my copy if she, if she a lot of, that's $275,000 that I'm riding on a perfect copy. And as much as I used to like to cheat in school, <laughs> I don't think that I can copy today. So, Jeff, I'm going to drop out of school. <laughs> She got a standing ovation. All right, just for giggles, if you had copied, Olivia said, Thomas Jackson. You might know him as Thomas Stonewall Jackson, who was a general in the Confederacy, during the Civil War, and Olivia was absolutely wrong. If you had copied, you would have given back $275,000. You did the right thing, congratulations. $300,000, Marley. How about that? How about that? Wait, so what was the answer? The correct answer was Jefferson Davis. Jefferson Davis. Down clue. So one little thing you have to do for me, I don't even think you mind doing it, do you? Not for one second. <laughs> There's the camera. My name is Marlies Pinto, and I may know how to drop a few pounds, but I'm definitely not smarter than a fifth grader. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. Congratulations, that is awesome. Good for you. fifth grader. It's time to meet our new classmate. She's an office manager by day and an extreme sports nut on the weekend. She attended West Shore Elementary and Fitness and please welcome Michelle Mendor. I'm surrounded by blondes today. Michelle, how are you? Welcome to the show. Yeah, there we go. Michelle. Oh, wow. That's wow. cute. So, I haven't seen that one in a long time. Look, I, look you're, you're cute. And it says you're an extreme sports nut. What, what kind of sports yeah. do you do? Um, well, I've been snowboarding my whole life, for well, about 16 years or so. I like skateboarding. I like love wakeboarding, um, surfing. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Wow. Yeah. Well, welcome to the show. Thank you. The neat thing is you don't have to take the test by yourself. These five right. fifth graders are going to help you. Right, you can guys. cheat off of them. And so pick one of them. Let's get started. Okay. All right. Let's go with Jenna. How are you, Jenna? I'm great. How are you? How are you feeling tonight? I feel really good and confident. Could be the night. Right. It could be the night yes, we I give away so. a million bucks. I hope so. I hope so. Hey, everybody, let's find out. Is Michelle Medor smarter than a fifth grader? <laughs> All right, Michelle. Ten subjects. Two from every grade, one through five. Pick one of them. Let's get started. Let's go with first grade animal science. First grade animal science. Let's start at the bottom, work our way up. All right, listen carefully. For $1,000, here's the first grade animal science question. True or false, the cricket is an insect. True or false, the cricket is an insect. Jenna has locked in her answer with authority. Michelle, what are you thinking? Well, I hear those guys chirping at night all the time. I look at them like they're bugs. Um, if I step on it, they crunch. I'm going to say <laughs> the answer is true. Whoa! Let's hope. Let's hope. Woo! I'm going to say you got $1,000. That's how easy it is. Michelle, let's double it. Pick another subject. Okay, okay, okay. Let's go with second grade math. Second grade math, all right. 
Your second grade math question is worth $2,000. Here it is. How many dimensions does a rectangle have? How many dimensions does a rectangle have? Classmate Jenna has locked in her answer. Dimensions. Well, if we draw a rectangle on a piece of paper, it's on a flat surface that's one dimension. I'm going to say that a rectangle has one dimension and lock that in. How many dimensions does a rectangle have? Let's see what your classmates over here had to say. Take a look at the board, Michelle. Two, two, wow. two, and four. Three wow. of the four of them are correct. Ooh. The correct answer is two. That's... So you were wrong. Okay. Hmm. Michelle, we have a dilemma. If Jenna said two, you have $2,000 and we continue on. Now the two dimensions that a rectangle has is length and width. Oh, right. Okay. If Jenna said sense. two, you have $2,000. If she said anything other than two, you are going home with nothing. Oh. <sighs> Take a look at the board, Michelle. For $2,000, Jenna said, two! Good job, Jenna! Oh my God, thank you so much! Oh my God, thank you! Woo! 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 <laughs> Don't scare me thank like you. that again. Oh my gosh, length and width. Now, it is time to pick another classmate right now, though. Pick another subject. Let's go with fourth grade social studies. Fourth grade social studies. All right. Mm -hmm. I like the logic there, Michelle. If we struggle with a second grade question, right. let's go to the fourth grade. Right. All right. You. Your fourth grade social studies question worth $5,000 is live free or die is the motto of what US state? Live free or die is the motto of what U.S. state? Your classmate Bryce has locked in his answer. What do we know about state mottos? Well, let's see. Live free or die is the motto of what U.S. state? I think it's New York, however, I think that Bryce might have a better idea of this, so I would like to peek at his answer. All right, you want to peek. Ah. Ah. The question is, live free or die is the motto of what U.S. state? You wanted to peek? Your fifth grade classmate, Bryce, said... New Hampshire. Wow, Hampshire. New Hampshire is by New York. That's up there. You know what? Let's go with New Hampshire. Say New Hampshire. New Hampshire. <laughs> but your gut was what? Oh no. What New was your York. gut? New York. Yes. And what do people say about your gut? Go with your gut. Go with your gut. Thank God you didn't, because oh. he's right, and you got $5,000. Oh. Good job, buddy. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Wow. We have seven subjects remaining. Oh, my gosh, that's a lot. Pick another that's one, great. and let's turn that 5000 into 10000 Third grade geography. All right. 
Right. The wow. third grade world geography question worth $10,000 is coming up right after this. Welcome back to All You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader. The battle of the blondes continues. You scared us just a moment ago. You scared me. All right, you selected third grade world geography. Bryce said he likes it. For $10,000, let's take a look at the question. The Bahamas is an island nation located in what ocean? The Bahamas is an island nation located in what ocean? Bryce has locked in his answer. Have you been to the Bahamas? I've never been to the Bahamas, although if I win a million dollars, I'll be there soon. Um, <laughs> Let's see, Florida, Haiti, Bahamas. I'm going to say the Bahamas are located in the Atlantic Ocean, and I'm gonna lock that in. Michelle, take a look at what I wrote. You have $10,000. Okay, pick your next up. You know what? This is the big two five. Let's go for first grade English. First grade English. Oh, yeah. I'll take oh, yeah. this twice. All right, Michelle. Come on, English. Listen carefully. It is worth $25,000. The first grade English question is, how many syllables are in the following word? The word is student. How many syllables are in the word student? Olivia has locked in her answer. Well, Jeff, I'm gonna say that there are two syllables in the word student. The answer is two. You got $25,000. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Guess what, Michelle? I have $25,000. We're halfway to the million dollar question. Whoa. Five subjects on the board. Time to pick another one. OK, what are you good at? Uh, I'm good at fifth grade US history and fourth grade astronomy. Okay, you're good. You're good at those. So let's go with fifth grade U.S. history. Fifth grade U.S. history. You're good at it. You like to live dangerously, don't you? Well, yeah. You, 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 you like the risk. You climbed all the way up to fifth grade. All right, listen carefully. In the 1630s, Roger Williams was banished from Massachusetts for his political views and then went on to establish what present-day U.S. state. In the 1630s, Roger Williams was banished from Massachusetts for his political views, and then went on to establish what present-day U.S. state. Olivia has locked in her answer. Um, I believe in the 1630s, they were developing states closer to the Mississippi, but I don't remember which side. And I think for some reason, Roger Williams pops in my head with the state Missouri. So I'm just gonna go with Missouri. I told you earlier, sometimes it's best not to trust your gut. Mm. 
Your gut said Missouri. Mm -hmm. That is wrong. But you've got $25,000. You've got two new surfboards. You've got the rack. And you got money left for a trip. That's so good. The That's correct good. answer is Rhode Island. Oh. Rhode Island. Okay. All right. A good day at work. $25,000. A good day at work. Thank you. You've been a joy to have here. One last piece of business before you leave the classroom, though. I am Michelle Medor, and I am definitely not smarter than a fifth grader. We'll see you next time. Goodbye, everybody. Kids, you ready to meet your new classmates? Yeah! He is a Nobel Prize winning scientist who helped prove the Big Bang Theory. He attended Palmer Elementary in Palmer, Alaska. Please welcome George Fitzgerald Smurf the Third. Welcome to the show. Thanks to meet Jeff. So what should I, I guess I should call you Professor, huh? No, or George. Let's go with George. I like this. And George, I guess this is you as a uh, small child in Palmer, Alaska, huh? This is about three years old. Oh. That's me at 16. Yeah. <laughs> there I look smart, right? Starting <laughs> to look like a scientist there. And uh, well, I imagine in high school you were in science fairs and things like that. I came okay. in second the science fair. No, you, you came in. The guy that wins the Nobel Prize came well, in you know, second? I got better as time went on, right? So, so how does a guy go about proving the Big Bang Theory? We figured out over the years a way to make a picture of the embryo universe. So oh, it's the wow. very beginning of the universe, but it's got the blueprint for what's going to happen later so all day. So you found there. the infant universe. I can't even find my car keys <laughs> half the time. <laughs> <laughs> Out of curiosity, do you happen to carry around the Nobel Prize? Yes, I do. You do, really? You want to see it? Oh, I yeah, yeah, I bring mean, it trust me, luck. I've never seen one. <laughs> oh, wow. Looks like a giant penny, kind of. That's awesome. That's very cool and probably the only chance I will ever have to see a Nobel Prize. <laughs> this is very exciting. Well, welcome to our classroom. Thank you. I know you've probably spent a lot of time in classrooms. Let me, let me tell you how this one works. On the board, you're going to see 10 subjects. You answer all these questions correctly, we're going to give you one more subject, and it will be worth $1 million. How about that, George? Here's the cool thing about this classroom. We're gonna let you cheat, and you can do it off of these five fifth graders. Let me introduce them real quick. Jonathan is here. <laughs> Jenna. <laughs> Olivia. <laughs> Bryce. <laughs> and Francesca. <laughs> All right, Professor, choose one of them. Let's get started. <laughs> Um, probably second grade spelling and first grade. <laughs> I love it. The Nobel Prize winner is asking the fifth grader what she's good at. <laughs> I love well, that. Well, I need help in spelling, so. <laughs> <laughs> so do I. Let's find out, ladies and gentlemen, if George Fitzgerald Smoot III is smarter than a fifth grader. <laughs> All right, George, pick a subject. Okay, let's start with... First grade earth science. First grade earth science. George, I'm not a gambling man. I'm going to bet on you on this one. All right. For $1,000, here is the first grade earth science question. In the northern hemisphere, the month of April is in which of the four seasons? In the northern hemisphere, the month of April is in which of the four seasons? Your classmate Jenna has locked in her answer. It's got to figure you know a little bit about hemispheres, right? Right. I know the northern hemisphere. The month of April is in which of the four seasons? Well, it's spring. It's where the equinox is. You want to lock that in? I'm lock that in.
We're off to a good start, Professor. You got $1,000. I said She had spring as well. She could have bailed you out. She had spring as well. I thought she did. All right, you got $1,000. Let's go ahead and double it. You got nine subjects remaining. No. Second grade spelling. Second grade spelling. <laughs> you like spelling, right? All right. The second grade spelling question worth $2,000 is, which is the correct spelling of the word that means a person who runs a school? P-R-I-N-C-I-P-A-L, P-R-I-N-C-I-P-L-E, or P-R-I-N-C-E-P-A-L? Your classmate Jenna has locked in her answer. What is the correct spelling of the word that means a person who runs a school. Well, I figured spelling was my worst subject tonight. I would need Jenna's help. But my mother was a principal, and so I know the answer is A. All right, let's take a look at the board. Let's see what Jenna said. A, principal. You're both right. You got $2,000. Good job, Jenna. To a good start. All right. All right, Professor, choose another classmate. Oh, Jonathan. Jonathan. Come on. What's your specialty? My specialty is math or any kind of science. Well, that makes two of you. <laughs> I think second grade science. Second grade animal science. All right, Professor, listen carefully. Question is worth $5,000. The second great animal science question is this. True or false, the porcupine is a type of rodent? True or false, the porcupine is a type of rodent? Your classmate Jonathan has locked in his answer. Now, you said your mom was a principal. Did you ever get sent to the principal's office? Yes, I did. <laughs> did you really? Because that would be kind of weird, I think. Yeah, it is. Yeah. You know, to be a good scientist, you've got to skirt the boundaries of <laughs> <laughs> You know what? To be a good comedian, you have to go to the principal's office a few times, too. Right. All right, I'm thinking hard on this question. Uh, I'd like to cheat. You'd like to cheat? Yes, I'd like to see The you. Nobel Prize winning scientist <laughs> wants to cheat. <laughs> I love it. I'd like to look at, at Jonathan's... Uh... You'd like to peek at his paper? Yep. All right. True or false, the porcupine is a type of rodent. Your 10-year-old classmate Jonathan said... True. How's that ring? I don't know. I thought it was a marsupial. And so I would go for false, and then he can save me. <laughs> He's 10. You won a Nobel Prize. Yes. <laughs> well, I'm betting the odds here. Right, I like that. Okay, so I'm going for faults. <laughs> Jonathan, for the rest of your life, you are going to be able to tell everybody you meet that you answered a question correctly that a Nobel Prize winner did not. You are right. <laughs> Professor, you got $5,000. Thank you. A porcupine is a rodent. Only problem with that, it cost you two cheats. Cost you your peak and your save. Oh, we're that's about bad. to play for $10,000. All right, I guess we take Jonathan seriously. Fourth grade math. Fourth grade math, you like math. Woo! All right, Professor. The fourth grade math question worth $10,000 is this. How many degrees are there in each angle of an equilateral triangle? How many degrees are there in each angle of an equilateral triangle your classmate has locked in? OK, so you want to know how many angles there are in an equilateral triangle, which is three equal Sides, the answer is 60 degrees. You sound pretty sure. I'm sure. 
You're right. You got $10,000. Your buddy had you covered, too. All right. But I had no favor. Good job, Jonathan. Thank you, Jonathan. All right, Professor, we are down to six subjects. You have three classmates remaining. Pick one. Olivia, Olivia. Now, I got to ask you a question. It says on the card you grew up in Alaska and Florida. You left out Alabama, too. Alabama, too? <laughs> yeah. You know what? <laughs> the, the places that we've mentioned, and I say this with, with, with all honor, sport one or two rednecks. Yeah, one or two. Are you telling me that a Nobel Prize winner might come from a redneck family? Quite a lot. Really? Quite true. Oh, that gives me up. Like, how would you know somebody in your family would be a redneck? Anyways, you can tell you're a redneck when a family member has lost an extremity in a fireworks incident. <laughs> I love it. Hey, I'll write that down. <laughs> you and I might be related. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. All right, six subjects remain. All right, we've got to ask Olivia, what's her specialty? What do you think, Olivia? Fourth grade U.S. history or third grade world geography? She picked world geography okay. or history. Let's take world geography. World geography. Third grade world geography. We want to get this one. You get this one right, you're leaving here with no less than 25,000, okay? All right. Come on, Olivia. The third grade world geography question worth $25,000 is. Coming up when we come back. <laughs> Welcome back to Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Our contestant is none other than Nobel Prize winning scientist George Smoot III. He's got $10,000. We're about to play for 25,000. You selected third grade world geography. The third grade world geography question is this. Scandinavia is located on what continent? Scandinavia is located on what continent? Your classmate, Olivia, has locked in her answer. So this is an advantage to winning the Nobel Prize because you get to go to Scandinavia. So you know it's in Europe. You agree? I'm, I'm gonna take your word for it because I've never been invited to the Nobel <laughs> Prize ceremony. You're absolutely right, Professor. You got $25,000. Thank you, guys. You're halfway there, George. We're halfway there. Party. You, you can take a nice trip with $25,000. Do you like to travel? Yeah, I like to travel. Now, when you won the Nobel Prize, is, is there money that goes with that? Yeah, I donated that to charity. All of it? For, for yeah, for uh, scholarships and fellowships and general purposes. You I'm are hoping, a real hero. I'm hoping one of these guys gets one of them. Did you hear what he said? He hopes one of you guys get one of that, those scholarships. I think that would be awesome. Though today, we're trying to put a little money in the professor's pocket, right? That's right. Yeah, I, I like that. All right, professor, we have five subjects remaining. What do you think? Music or U.S. history? Okay, it's fourth grade history. Fourth grade history, all right. It's a classroom club question. This was sent in by an actual fourth grader. Listen carefully before you hit the buzzer. There are two U.S. presidents buried in Arlington National Cemetery. William Taft is one of them. Who's the other? There are two U.S. presidents buried in Arlington National Cemetery. William Taft is one of them. Who's the other? Olivia has locked in her answer. I, have you ever been to Arlington National Cemetery? I have been to Arlington National Cemetery. I was just there. I chaperoned the seventh grade class on their trip to Washington, so I was right. there not and long ago. It's the ago Curtis myself. Lee Mansion there. And uh, I believe that John F. Kennedy is also buried there. So I lock in my answer.
You know, Kennedy had a vice president named Johnson. Johnson drove a Lincoln. <laughs> you know what? I'm not going to mess with you. You're absolutely right. You got $50,000, George. Two U.S. presidents were buried in Arlington Cemetery. William Taft is one. John F. Kennedy is the other. She had the right answer, too. All right. Thank you. We are down to four subjects. We have two classmates well, I'm remaining. I'm going to go for Bryce. Bryce, come on up here. <laughs> all right. All right, now he said, as smart as he is, with all he's accomplished, he's been to the principal's office. Have you ever been to the principal's office? Um, yeah, once in first grade. One, in first... I'm a naughty little boy. What did you get sent to the principal's office for? Do I really have to tell? Yeah, you really have to tell. <laughs> There's this boy. He called me small, and I punched him. It was a first grade. It was a first grade. I didn't know what to do. Right. I, I didn't go all gangster on him. Just you didn't go but, gangster uh, on him. Uh, so I just punched him and went to the principal's office. I don't imagine you've ever gone gangster on anybody, have you? And I am oh, never no. going to do that thing. Now, one see, one you time. learned your lesson. I've learned my lesson. All right, Bryce, four subjects on the board. If you had to help the professor with two of them, what would you pick? Um, health and music. Health and music, the third grade and the first grade question. Okay, let's start with first grade music. First grade music, all right. You've done great so far, but I want you to listen carefully and think before you hit the buzzer, because on the last question, if you'd missed it, you weren't really giving any money back. You missed this one, and you dropped down to $25,000. You have $50,000 right now, you get it right. You have 100000 okay? Here is the $100,000 question. True or false, a conga is a type of musical instrument in the percussion family. True or false, a conga is a type of musical instrument in the percussion family. Classmate Bryce has locked in his answer. You ever been to a percussion family reunion? Oh, <laughs> loud. All right, so I know there's a conga line in dancing, but I <laughs> You also... don't seem the type, Professor. Yeah, <laughs> only when I have to. <laughs> However, uh, I think there are conga drums, and so I'm going that it is uh, an instrument because I don't want to use my last cheat until I have to. The question, true or false, a conga is a type of musical instrument in the percussion family. You didn't want to use your cheat. You wanted to answer yourself. You said true. You're right, you got $100,000! There's a conga! I figured you'd get that right because the big bang theory sounds like it has to do with the percussion family. We are going to be playing for $175,000 right after to a million, and he will get there. But what happens when he gets to the top of our money ladder? Million dollar question is... We'll shock you. Welcome back to Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Our contestant, Professor George Smoot III, has got $100,000. Now, you said you wanted to travel. Anything else you want to do? $100,000 is a lot of money. Ah, uh, well, I need a little bit more. I want to buy a, an auto lube center in Vegas. An uh, auto I, lube yeah, center in with, Vegas? With a million dollars, that's a good down payment. <laughs> you know, you know when what? I was a kid, I was so skinny that I could slide under the car without putting on jacks. So one of my jobs was to lube the car. You know, the back days when you had grease nipples and all, all the joints and stuff. So the guy that proved the Big Bang Theory wants to own a lube shop <laughs> in Las Vegas. <laughs> There's not even a might be a redneck. You are a redneck if that's what you're gonna do with a million dollars. I got the expertise. Vegas is cool. Yeah. And there's a lot of tax benefits. Yeah, you know? Vegas, and people <laughs> always need to get their oil changed in a lube job. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure you'll do a bang-up job with it. So, <laughs> three subjects remain. 
two fifth grade, one third grade. Third grade help. Third grade help. You like that, Bryce? Love it. All right. Third grade help. And professor, listen carefully because you can drop out of school if you don't like the question with $100,000, all right? All right. The third grade health question worth $175,000 is this. In the human body, the optic nerve sends signals from the eye to what other organ? In the human body, the optic nerve sends signals from the eye to what other organ? Classmate Bryce has locked in his answer. Okay, your eyes are up here, the optic nerves come out of the back of your eye, and they go to the closest place, which is your brain for most people. <laughs> but I lock in the brain. <laughs> All right, is it just me or when he said the closest place to the brain for most people, was he looking at me when he said that? <laughs> The question, in the human body, the optic nerve sends signals from the eye to what other organ? Francesca, what'd you say? I wrote brain. Jonathan. I got brain. You got brain. What'd you say, Jenna? I said the old noggin. The noggin. <laughs> what do you think, Olivia? I said brain. The brain? Brain. It's a clean sweep. You're absolutely right. You got 175000 <laughs> Pretty good one, George. You are down to your very last classmate. Francesca, come on up here. All right, help me through here. I have a feeling that I know which of the two subjects you well, like the most. Know. We're gonna go to Francesca and see what she thinks. Now, out of, out of the two, what do you think? I like vocabulary. You like vocabulary, and, and he helps solve the Big Bang Theory. Do you, do you know what the Big Bang Theory is? No. This has to do with how the universe came into being. Seriously? Think, yeah, it's like how the universe came into existence. You must be really smart. My what? students say it's that I'm so old, it's not so much that I discovered it, but that I remembered it. Yeah, <laughs> you were there <laughs> when it happened. <laughs> All right, fifth grade vocabulary, fifth grade astronomy. Uh-huh, which one? Yeah. Do you know how embarrassing it'll be if I don't get the astronomy <laughs> question right? <laughs> All right, I'll do astronomy first. Fifth grade astronomy. <laughs> All right, I, I want to see you not only take your trip to Bali, I want to see you get your lube shop in Las Vegas. <laughs> but I want to see you be smart. You've proven in the past that you can do that. If you get this one right, you're going to get $300,000. <laughs> But you miss it, you're gonna drop down to 25,000, okay? So, the question worth $300,000 is coming up right after this. <laughs> Welcome back to Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? It is a very fun night in the classroom. Our contestant, Professor George Smoot III, who won the Nobel Prize, is about to play for $300,000. Now, you said earlier that if you won the million dollars, you would travel a little bit, but you would also open up a lube shop in Las Vegas. It's a moneymaker. <laughs> and fun. And fun. <laughs> you really know how to party, George. <laughs> It's in Vegas. <laughs> I personally would love nothing more than to have the guy that gave away all the money he won for winning the Nobel Prize actually walk out of here with a million dollars today. That's what I want to say. The subject is fifth grade astronomy. You ready? I'm ready. The question worth $300,000 is this. 
What country was the first to put a human in space? What country was the first to put a human in space? Your classmate Francesca has locked in her answer. Don't hit too quickly because here recently we have had a lot of people get to the top of the ladder and drop back down to 25,000. I want, I just want to. I know, isn't that a lot of fun? It's not a lot of fun, no. <laughs> it's like being in free fall. <laughs> yeah, except the free fall doesn't really hurt. It's that part where you hit the ground that hurts. What are you thinking, Professor? I'm thinking it was the Soviet Union, now broken up to Russia, and it was Yuri Gagarin. Remember how you said it was going to be very embarrassing if you missed an astronomy yeah, question? I know. You didn't miss it. You're absolutely right. You got $300,000. $300,000. Yeah. Just for giggles. No money on it. Do you remember when it was? In the 50s, late 50s. No. 63? No. I give up. <laughs> when was it? April 12th, 1961. Ah, OK. So See? I got the right decade. <laughs> you, got the, you got the right decade on your third guess. So, <laughs> and I knew the Close. answer yeah. because it's written on this card. <laughs> You know, I can still mess up here. Luckily, I don't want to see you I mess Francesca. Up. I would love, I would love tonight to be the night. But I don't want to see you give back money. Let's review where we are. Right now, in your pocket, you have three hundred thousand dollars. The last question on the board, the fifth grade vocabulary question, is worth five hundred thousand dollars. You get it right, we're on to the million dollar question. You miss it, we drop down to $25,000, okay? You have one cheat remaining, which is a copy, which means you have to take the answer your classmate has written if you choose to go that way. Right, I'm counting on Francesca. And, and you can see the question and still drop out of school. So All here right. we go. Here is the $500,000 question. What two-word phrase derived from Italian is a musical term meaning to sing without accompaniment? What two-word phrase derived from Italian is a musical term meaning to sing without accompaniment? Your classmate has locked in her answer. Do you sing much? Not so much. Not so much. And not without accompaniment. <laughs> you know, that'll drown me out. Um, I kind of know the answer, but I, if I cheat, I must take... If you take your copy, you must take the answer your classmate has written down. Or you could drop out of school with $300,000, which is a pretty good day's work. I think it'd be fun to cheat and to copy. I didn't see that coming. <laughs> you need to be in Las I trust Vegas. my classmates. I, I really did not see that coming. And, and, and doing this week after week, I think I know by this point in the game which way somebody's going to go. You didn't look like a gambler. You said you had an idea. What was your idea? Acapella. Acapella. Hmm. Let's see what the class said. Bryce said musical. Jonathan said monologue. Jenna said vocomonti, which means I have no idea in Italian. <laughs> and Olivia said monosing. Does that make you feel better? No. <laughs> Not at all. But that's, that's why I said Francesca to last. Here's the deal. They all got it wrong. Yeah, I recognize that. This is the same class that she sits in every week. Acapella 
if you had said it yourself, is the right answer. But you didn't. You chose to go with her answer. The only way you can stay in the game is if your classmate Francesca said a cappella. For $500,000, Francesca's answer is coming up right after this. What are you doing to me? Our contestant, George Schmuth III, a Nobel Prize winner, is playing for $500,000. Before the break, you were asked this fifth grade vocabulary question. What two-word phrase derived from Italian is a musical term meaning to sing without accompaniment? You decided to use your last sheet and copy Francesca's paper, even though you had the correct answer, which is a cappella. So, the only way you can stay in the game is if this nine-year-old said a cappella. How you feeling, Professor? Well, I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm preparing for free fall. See, this is why you shouldn't gamble and you want to go to Las Vegas. <laughs> Professor, take a look at the board. Francesca said... Acapella! Professor, we are halfway to the lube shop. <laughs> you have $500,000. I don't want to come visit. I want a free lube on my truck the rest of my life. We'll work something out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Work something out. You know that's going to be in a discount. It's not going to be free. All right. Your heart's got to be pounding right now. A little bit. You almost <laughs> just lost half a million dollars. Of course. Yeah. George Smoot the Third. I love that name. That's so, just the coolest. My cousins name. all call me George the Third. If you George want to, the Third. If you want to, you know. That's I like, don't know. It sounds smarter the other way. George <laughs> Smoot the Third. We are at the million dollar question. <laughs> this doesn't happen often in this classroom. But we are about to see the subject for the million dollar question. And let me tell you how it's different from the other questions. First of all, none of your classmates who have served you well today they did great. can help Thank you, you out. <laughs> Just you, Professor. I'm going to show you the subject, at which point you can choose whether you want to see the question or not. But once you elect to see the question, you have to answer. Answer correctly, and you walk out of here with one million dollars and a lube shop. Answer incorrectly, you're going to give back $475,000, OK? That's not so cool. Not so cool. <laughs> you ready to see the subject? Yes, I am. Do not hit the button too quickly. All right. Is there any subject that if it was up there, you, you know without a doubt you wouldn't go for it? Clearly vocabulary. Vocabulary. <laughs> like I said, you and I could hang together. All right. The subject of the million dollar question is this. U.S. geography. <laughs> well, I know a lot about geography. Right now, you have half a million. And I have a half a million. You can walk out of here right now with half a million. Yeah. You get it wrong, you're going to drop down to 25,000. It's just a question of, do you want to risk the half a million or not? Dude. What, what, what are you thinking? I mean, how, how, how strong do you feel in U.S. geography? I feel pretty good. I think I could probably get it. I'm 
trying to decide what the risk is about going sure. forward. Because some of my friends said, if you ever get this far, stop. Well, some of those friends must have been watching this show, George, because we have only had a handful of people make it to this point. George, take a look at the board. You can figure the odds out yourself, gambling man. Only 14 contestants have made it this far. 10 of them dropped out and went home with $500,000. Four of them saw the million dollar question. Three of those were wrong and lost $475,000. Only one person has made it to the million dollars. So figure the odds out yourself, Mr. Nobel Prize winner. What are you gonna do, George Smoot the third? What do you think? I love the fact that you're asking people who get 10 bucks a week in allowance <laughs> what they would do, and all, the, all of them are going, go for it, yeah. <laughs> all right, I, I, I have a feeling which way this is gonna go. Let me ask the crowd, what do you think he ought to do? <laughs> Put in money. <laughs> so what are you thinking, George? Ah. <laughs> the lucky medal. Yeah. So what are you going to do, George Smoot the third? All right, I'll go for it. You want to lock that in? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> George Smoot is playing for a million dollars when we come back. Oh, we go, Welcome back. We are playing for one million dollars. It is a wild in the classroom. We have Nobel Prize winning scientist, George Smoot III. He has $500,000 in his pocket. We are about to see the million dollar question. All right, professor. The subject of the million dollar question is US geography. The one million dollar question is what US state is home to Acadia National Park. What U.S. state is home to Acadia National Park? I'm thinking it's either, it's on one of the coasts, and so it's either gotta be Maine or California. Why am I thinking about California? Sort of, Maine sort of feels better, but I, no, California keeps sticking in my mind. Acadia National Park. I'm gonna go with Maine. How did you come to Maine? Well, tell, uh, tell me what I've you were thinking. Been everywhere, done everything. <laughs> been everywhere, done everything? <laughs> like Not the quite, but, song. but I, I know I visited places like that. I just gotta remember where it was. It's a, it's a memory search, you know. Professor, for $1 million, the question was, 
What U.S. state is home to Acadia National Park? You said Maine. Oh, man, I hate this part. You made history one time with the Big Bang Theory, but tonight, you made it again! You made it again! I go to Las Vegas, I'm going to the Big Bang Lube shop. <laughs> that is so cool. You are only the second person and the first man that ever gets to say this. There's the camera. I am George Smoot, and I am smarter than a fifth grader. Thanks for watching.